this is telling me maybe we have been for a few seconds even welcome back and i see us there and i hope you can hear me okay i'll try to remember to speak up i'm really you know alone here uh so that's why i'm talking so quiet i guess um I've been on a trip and my computer had to update and so it's taken me a minute to get everything rolling. It looks like we're in all the right places we should be. We're back at Signum Academy on Twitch. This is Wesley. I'm going to remember to click that. And now, now I think you'll see our game. There it is. Earthbound. This playthrough Oops. Uh, that we've been looking at. This is the second half of the game um somebody kindly put all together for us on youtube and that way we don't have to stream it ourselves it was nintendo complete there they are you can like and subscribe um but of course we've been at this for a while now and we are really towards the very end of the game and so we'll jump ahead to uh to see about uh, the end of magic Cant there there he is fighting his his shadow we talked about this last time, but I don't think we actually looked at it, so I'll play this little bit to, to help us pick up where we left off. Ness in the depths of his mind, and you see literally deep down in this watery, um, sort of colorful, uh, shiny place within his self. Uh, within himself, he finds the Mani Mani statue. Let's take a look at this. the evil part of your brain. You can't beat me because you are the one who forced me into being. Ness's nightmare attacked. This has got to be one of the tougher battles in the game. Um, not only are you fighting a powerful opponent, uh, and we faced the Mani Mani statue before in another form back in Moonside, but this time Ness is all alone, right? He, at least he had... Uh, Jeff with him that time, and normally you'd have Paula and Pooh, your friends with you. Ness, in this moment, is facing his nightmare and without anyone's help. Um, I think we talked last time about how this represents a kind of struggle with the dark side, the evil side of himself. And you can think about all the ways that that applies to great stories, such as The Hobbit and The Lord of the Rings. You can think of Bilbo or Frodo facing Gollum, this creature who was once a hobbit or something very like uh, what they are. You can think about the voices struggling within Frodo in moments when he is tempted to use the ring uh, and, and, of course, at the very end, spoilers, when he's tempted to not cast it into the fire after all. Now, of course, in that moment, it is um, not his own willpower that's that's the saving the day by any stretch. It's it's a power greater than his own that he has submitted himself to from the beginning. He was willing to go on the journey, and so in that sense, yes, it was his will that brought him there. Um, but there's something greater at work. Um, and, and he is just a part of it. Sam recognizes this when they're looking at the stars together. If you remember, it's Sam who points out that there's going to be a story about them someday, too. They're, um, they're a part of something bigger. And in a way, I, I think uh, Earthbound fits really beautifully with this. Um, it is just a video game. You know, you fight these battles and um, you go on your adventure. Uh, and you can play with your friends or you can play alone. Um, I hope that you are playing the game. But in a way, I think Earthbound fits into this much larger story and this story that we tell in many different forms with fantasy literature, uh, with movies and TV, and maybe you uh, play games with your friends where you play pretend and you have your imagination running wild, and maybe you write your own stories. Um, in all these ways, Earthbound picks up this long 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 tradition tolkien is really a, a relatively recent example of it um, and i'm sure there's other examples that we've talked about here too but video games are part of that they are a uh, a way for 
storytellers and for audiences to connect to things that are deep in our experience, right? Things like a nightmare, um, a part of you that is difficult to overcome, but that you have to face. Um, memories, like we saw last time, Ness going through his whole adventure, gathering these pieces of what turns out to be maybe his earliest memory of uh, being a child and hearing his parents talking, talking about him, talking about his name, and noticing that he has these powers, uh, talking about their hopes for him. So it becomes clear, I think, uh, as you get to the end of this game, that it really is dealing with some uh, major themes uh, that, that all this great literature fantasy literature and otherwise has always been interested in. So we're going to look at the very end. Oh, I'm so sorry. I know that. I know that. Thank you, Microsoft. We're going to look at the very end of the game and hopefully won't be interrupted too much here. But uh, I do encourage you to interrupt me um, and I'll try to remember to, uh, to check from time to time over in Twitch. There's a chat. Drop questions, drop comments in the chat here. And, uh, you know, I've got just such a, a weak setup, but I'll, I'll do my best to check it. And, um, and yeah, let's look at the end of this game. So after we defeat uh, Ness's nightmare, he wakes up. Here's his friends. What happened, Ness? You've been unconscious for a long time. You kept saying something. Saturn Valley. We need to teleport. All right, so pretty quickly here, the game just kind of moves you along. We're going to head to Saturn Valley. So we teleport to Saturn Valley. Who's here? Um, let's skip around a little bit. There we go. All right, so we're ready to talk to uh, to our friends. Big time trouble ahead. Everything proceeded as plans. The phase distorter, the purpose of this device, to enable instantaneous travel through space and time. In this prototype, you can only travel to different points within the same time period. It is, however, able to search out enemies. Yaha! <laughs> uh, Dr. Antonitz, what a, what a character. So, again, the game is kind of rushing us here at the end, but the gist of it is they've created this device, the Phase Distorter. We're going to go and, and face Gigas using this. We're going to face the big bad, the evil, that's behind all the, the minor evils throughout the game. But something has happened. It, uh, the, the part has been stolen. The part that will allow it to actually travel through, through time is not there. And so... Um, we're going to have to go and recover it. We're going to have to go and rescue Mr. Saturn. Breathe is so good, he says. All right, so they try using it. There's a material that we need. Yeah, it doesn't work. One thing is missing. That material can't normally be found on the Earth. It came from a meteorite that fell when I was much younger. Have you seen a meteorite anywhere recently? Eureka, that's it. With even just a piece of this meteorite. You can... Etc. Alright. Take every possible precaution. Okay. I wonder what Onet is like. So, again, very strongly letting us know where exactly we need to go. Turns out we're going to go back home. This is... Exactly like the end of the Lord of the Rings. Because, of course, the end is not defeating Sauron and destroying the ring, celebrating. The end is the hobbits returning home and finding that their home is quite drastically different from when they left. So let's see what Onet is like. Let's go ahead and skip over here. Onet is dark. It's like that night the game started, but not dark because it's nighttime. Dark because... There are very powerful enemies here. The ghost of Saturn, or sorry, Starman. The ghost of Starman can cast Starstorm, uh, 
the most powerful um, attack uh, psi that uh, your friend Pooh has learned. They also know it. So again, there's a sense in which they are a kind of shadow of Pooh. You know, they're, they're a shadow of the very first enemy that you really fight in the game with the help of Buzz Buzz, who, by the way, has also passed on at this point. So there's a lot of attention to where games begin, where stories begin, and where they end. Those, in a way, are, are the core. Um, the journey, of course, brings you through an adventure, but, but the goal is a return in some sense, a return having brought something back, having restored something that was in danger or even lost. Of course, at this point, it's the town itself that is in great danger. We have to make our way to the meteorite, fighting these difficult enemies. Of course, we can stop at home, and um, you can rest up as many times as you need. Turns out that we are the strongest force in the world at this time, according to our dog. Um, and so this is a chance to really level up if you're a little bit underpowered. Um, you can fight enemies earn money, um, buy those things in Saturn Valley that they mentioned, um, gain levels, and uh, take as much time here as you need. This is a pretty brief moment in the course of the game, but a really important one as it's really your last chance to prepare before the final dungeon. So you can get one hit kills from enemies, no matter how strong you are, they can diamondize, you turn you into a diamond one hit, you have to heal. After just about every battle, someone will probably be KO'd or turned into a rock. So, Very, very difficult portion of the game. If you're playing along, don't get discouraged. Just know that it's going to take some leveling up. Um, you've got all the time in the world. You're young. Kids like you should be playing Super Nintendo games in times like these. So here we are at the meeting. <laughs> At the meteorite piece. That's all it is. Um, so let's skip ahead here. We're going to bring that back to Saturn Valley. Are you ready? Hmm. Ready for what, you might ask. I'm not seeing any questions or comments in the chat, so we'll just keep on going here. We're almost to the end of the game. Thanks again for playing along here with us at Signum Academy. Um, let's back up just a few seconds here to make sure we get the uh, there is just one thing though. Yeah, I think this is the important part. So, Dr. Ian Donuts is going to explain. He asks you a couple times, are you sure that you're ready? might not be able to return. Tells you a couple times about these features. All right, let's go. So this is the cave of the past. There's the Star Master. The last power. Psy Starstorm Omega. So cool. Alright, very, very powerful. Psy attack, and there's the kidnap Mr. Saturn. The bad guy, he's gone. To the past. Ding ding. A horn of life. So there's nothing else we can do here. Gigas is attacking from our exact location, but he's attacking from many years in the past. Hard for me to tell you, but... We must warp into the past and fight, but... The, the dot dot dots are letting us know there's something they don't want to say. It's hard for me to tell you. Dr. and Donuts... Just... Just give it to us straight. In order to attack the Yigas, we must warp to the past. This can be done by way of the Phase Distorter 3. However, the machine cannot warp living things. I mean life forms. Life is demolished in the process of warping. 
The only way to accomplish time travel is to transfer your brain program into a robot and send the robot to the past. Transfer means your spirit will go with the robot while your body is left behind. You cannot promise your spirit will come back after the battle in the past. You must understand that the four of you are the chosen ones. Do you still wish to face Gigas by traveling to the past? Yes. Do you accept this knowing you may not be able to return to your current firm? Yes. So Ness hands off his baseball cap. There's some very distressing noises. A drilling and sawing. I'm going to spare you guys some flashing lights. So in this moment, whatever is Ness is somehow being detached from his body and placed into a robotic body that can travel through time. You might remember that Buzz Buzz said something about coming from the future. He or it did this process of time travel and thus we can make a, a fair guess that Buzz Buzz was also a human or living being of some kind who had this process, had to undergo this process of being transferred into a robot body. The body of the Buzz Buzz that we know, of course, was not a life form at all, but a, a machine of some kind. The Starmen seem to be machines of some kind, and all those enemies uh, or ghosts. Um, they, too, perhaps were living beings who had this process of being transformed into robots. You might think, too, about a, uh, a situation like uh, Dungeon Man. Dungeon Man, of course dreamed of becoming one with the dungeons he created and eventually fused his body with the, the living dungeon uh, and tramped around with you in the desert. And that was great fun. Um, but in some sense, aren't we also giving ourselves to a machine and giving what is truly human about us into a robot form, into an artificial form that we have also created, right? Someone at Nintendo, and, and that creator, of course, primary one is, is Shigesato Itoi. Um, he put a lot of himself, and his team put a lot of themselves into this game for us. Now, we know that Tolkien had some very strong feelings about industry, machinery, modern technology, um, and he represents that pretty powerfully at the end of The Lord of the Rings with the scouring of the Shire, right? The Shire has been polluted by machineries um, that are, are unnatural and, and very deeply against the way of life of the hobbits. And so one of the last parts of that adventure involves restoring the land um, and br bringing things back into their, their, their past uh, way of life. So, this is all about, in a sense, going back to the past, going inward, facing those evils that are within us and that are from outside of us, the, the evils of technology, the dangers of technology. This game is very concerned with that. And Dr. Andonet says he's not sure if we can come back once we, once we go into the past, once we go into the robot, he doesn't know if the spirits of Ness and his friends will come out again. Now. This game does have a happy ending, just to, just to set your mind at ease. But let's, let's look how we get there. So we have to face the cave of the past. And here we are in the final battle, so I'll just go back a little bit here. This is what it looks like. It looks a lot like Ness's memory, his earliest memory. But now, instead of his house, there's this cave. This cave is very unpleasantly biological looking. It looks like it's breathing. And almost like it's a vein or a worm moving along. You can hear our robotic feet stomping onto it. Really should be squelching, I think, but I'm glad that they aren't. That would be nasty. And here we are. The source of this messed up 
final dungeon emerges and it's your face it's the face of Ness baseball cap and all and there's your neighbor Porky Pokey in the English translation Ness are you surprised it's me Pokey I assist only the strong and able that's Pokey you guys look pathetic the apple of enlightenment I've already made a prediction but I won't let what the apple of enlightenment predicted take place you guys will be beaten by Gigas Gigas will be stronger, a more powerful entity than any other. Why? Because of me. I was led by Gigas, and now I'm here. The Apple of Enlightenment could predict this. Master Gigas, no. Gigas is no longer the wielder of evil. He has become the embodiment of evil itself, which he cannot control on his own. He is the evil power. So here goes the final battle, part one. Fighting Pokey. So... We'll fight Pokey in his Devil's Machine. He's pretty scary. And Gigas is being uh, contained by the Devil's Machine. Pokey mentioned. The music is pretty rockin', so let's just enjoy that for a moment here. Let's check if there's any comments. comments right now. Alright. Gigas is using Ness's own attacks, but luckily we've got our Psychic Shield, just like we learned from Buzz Buzz at the start of the game. Multi-bottle rockets actually aren't that effective in this fight for a change. So, rocking on. He's very scared. He's going to turn off the Devil's Machine. Stage 2 of the fight. terrified too. Gigas cannot think rationally anymore. He isn't even aware of what he's doing now. His mind was destroyed by his incredible power. What an almighty idiot. That's what he is. You will be just another meal to him. We'll see, Porky. We'll see. So Porky disappears when we face Gigas' true form. No attacks seem to work. We can do whatever we want. And we just hear Gigas talking to us in this creepy voice, whispering into our, our mind. We can't grasp the form of his attack, but it's doing some serious damage. So physical attacks don't work. We can heal, we can do Psy attacks, but there's just not much hope here. You must really be at the end of your rope. In this bizarre dimension, you four are the only force fighting for justice. Here you stand, waiting to be burned up with all the rest of the universe. Right? The garbage of the universe. I can't help but shed a tear. My heart is beating incredibly fast. I must be experiencing absolute terror. I must scream for help here in the dark. Ha! Why not call your mummy, Ness? Say, Mommy, Daddy, I'm so frightened. I think I'm going to wet my pants. I know you have telepathy or something, so just try and call for help. You pathetically weak heroes of so-called justice. No one will help you now. Ha ha ha. So this is actually a, a very direct clue. Um, if you think about what that might mean, you can use your Psy attacks. You don't have a telepathy ability in this game. What you do have, though, um, is the Prey Command. So there it is. This is the one battle in the game that you don't win by fighting. Um, you don't win because you have Buzz Buzz helping you or Dungeon Man or anyone else. All you can do is pray. So... Paula is praying for somebody to help. And as you do this, the scene shifts away from the cave of the past to other places within the game. So here is Saturn Valley, the return of the phase distorter to the present. And suddenly they all notice Paula's voice calling out. You can see them calling each other together for help. There they are. All the Mr. Saturns felt a new startling feeling they had never experienced before. They all started praying for the safety of Ness and his friends. It's 
really very moving, this part of the game, especially if you're playing. And especially if you really don't know what to do. Because eventually, as the player, you'll just try everything that you have. You might accidentally try praying and realize that it's doing something. Something it has never done up to this point in the game. This prey ability has always been there, but it's never done this before. And so if you're really desperate and at the end of your rope, as Pokey says, you'll try it and you'll find that it actually works. It actually makes Gigas um, vulnerable. So here it goes again. So this time it's the Runaway Five and the people of Summers. So the Runaway Five are in Summers. Remember they said they wanted to go somewhere warm, warm and sunny. Prayed fervently. So your prayers are reaching people out there in the world. Um, your prayers are going to your friends and family. And in a way, your prayers are answered with theirs. You can think of this as a kind of effect where the future, with respect to our characters, is coming back to the past just like buzz buzz came back to set us on the journey now their prayers are reaching back in time in some mysterious way they are trying to help us so we'll pass through a few more of these little scenes each of our friends on our adventure has friends and family so now it's tony jeff his beloved friend and now people from Pooh's family in Dalam, they pray for his safety. His admirers. And Gigas continually shouting for you to, to, to hear his pleas. He's in a way praying as well for you to stop. But he, of course, is not in control, as Pokey said anymore, so he keeps fighting as well. And, and you can fight too, but it doesn't make any difference, really. Um, so now, Frank, your enemy who became your friend. Um, and maybe it's just too late for Gigas, but all the people of the earth begin praying. And of course, this game is called Mother in Japanese. Mother is a very important part of this game. In a way, the entire game leads up to this moment. We're back in Ness's house. Ness's mother felt terribly uneasy. She began to pray for the safety of her son and his friends. And that idea of the connection between family, family and friends, this power of love, um, is so mysterious, right? Many stories come back to this. Many, many great stories. Hone in at the beginning and at the end on that idea of the mysterious power of love. So. Can't think of anything else. So you keep praying and there's no one else who can pray back. It, it happens a handful of times. The prayer goes into the darkness, it says. And there's really no hope, it seems, for a moment here. But if you just keep trying, keep trying praying, someone, can you hear me? Please give us strength. This time, Paula and her friends' calls touch the heart of the letter A. So it will slowly start spelling out a name. And little by little, you'll realize that the name that it's spelling a L blank X. The name that it's spelling is the name that the player put in when Tony called for you uh, back in summers. 31,000 HP of damage. So the final person praying is the player. There's a beautiful kind of give and take here. And it, it proves to be the end of this final battle. Pokey, well, it's going to seem like I'm running away, Pokey says, but perhaps I'll just sneak away to another era to think about my next plan. It's a good bet that we'll see each other again. All right, I'll be seeing you. Which one of us do you think is the cool guy now? Hey, hey, 
phases out. So the world of the past, this nightmare of ours becomes unstable. I'm going to skip ahead in case anyone out there is damaged by, um, has anything that, that could hurt you from, from this kind of flashing lights. Um, we'll skip ahead. And there's our robot bodies. The war against Gigas is over. Narration says. Music swells. And you'll see at the last moment here those little some kind of little light comes out of each of the robots and floats away. Looks a lot like the light on the soundstone, if you remember. Um, and I've always loved thinking that, in some sense, that is Buzz Buzz's spirit that's that's in, in the soundstone, watching over us. Those lights of the spirit return mysteriously when all hope seems lost. They return to their their home in our heroes' bodies, and at last. Each of them pops up to their feet. Okay. So I think we've spoiled a lot of this game at this point. Let's just go on into the credits here uh, before we get too mushy. So Prince Pooh teleports home. And Jeff goes off home with his dad. Paula wants to be escorted, and if you say no, she'll escort you. Uh, a miracle. A miracle that happened because of your great courage. Oh, what a story that would be. So, you can go around the entire game and talk to everyone. And you can read these letters that came um, in Prince Pooh's final Psy ability. The kids have written you letters. Um, he wants to understand this tra this trait called courage. Uh, so let's go ahead and skip on. Because there's a lot that you can do at the end of the game. You can walk around and talk to everyone. But let's just go to the end here. Alright. So Ness is finally home. He's dropped Paul off at her place. You've done everything you wanted to do? Okay. Share your incredible experiences with me. You did so well. So, the game ends with Ness telling his story, um, letting his mom know everything that's been going on. This reconnection of the family at last. Uh, cues the credits here. And... As you'll see, they do this in the form of a, a cast, as if everyone's been playing a role all along. So there's the characters throughout the game. And they all make an appearance in the credits. As the music of the Runaway Five plays and your characters come and go. Flying men, if any of them were killed, they come up as tombstones. All the townspeople. Dad is the... <laughs> telephone. There's Ness. He says peace. Like everyone does in photos, he holds up the peace sign um, as he's done throughout the game and all those photos. And now all those photos are going to, to roll along with the actual credits, the, the credits of the people who made the game, who put so much of themselves into the game. And as this happens, the, the music switches to a version of, of the theme song. Uh, that theme song that we kind of put back together throughout the game, getting pieces of the melodies. The cameraman takes a photo of us. So smile, say fuzzy pickles. And then we'll see all those photos play. There's the first one. So this is the staff of the game. Um, Shigesato Itoi, as I mentioned, uh, it's the producer, director, writer, um, and second only to him uh, are the musician, uh, the musical programmers, Keiji Suzuki, Hirokazu Tanaka. Incredible, incredible music. I, I, I can't, I can't even uh, tell you how, how much 
I love this game and and the ending. Um, if you've made it to the end of this game, I, I, I really want to say you've done so well um, because it's not an easy thing uh, with a game this old. I, I totally understand. So Feanoran um, Sekichi, hi to you two. Uh, I'm going to I'm going to say hi, uh, although it's a little late. I don't know how long ago you put that in the chat. Um, welcome. We're just concluding our playthrough of Earthbound, and you can see me going off into infinity here. So I'm gonna I'm gonna go away from this screen now. Um, but let me just say, um, I think that if you play this game as a, as a kid, you get something different from it than if you play it as a, a young person, a, a young adult, and you get something different from it again if you go back and play it as an older person, as a more mature person, and like every great book and great story, you can get something more and more from it each time you go back to it. And that's because it has such a deep theme that's at the core and, and that runs through it. And the love that was put into this game uh, is as profound as any storytellers um, in any story that I know of. And I've, I've read some stories. And I, I have to say um, that this game truly rewards replaying. So if this was your first time through, I love that you played it. I encourage you, I urge you to play it again in a few years, in a, in a, in a little while, uh, it might be. It might be different the next time you do. And I can say that as a, as a grown up, and more than that, as a parent playing this game, um, it just continues to become more and more powerful. And, and so if you think about the way that this story is is built, um, it involves Ness going away from home, of course, like every journey, every hero has to go on. Um, but it very importantly involves Ness continually calling home, calling his dad, calling his mom throughout the game to check in with them, to, to tell them what's going on and to talk to them and connect with them. And I think that's so powerful, that idea that even as you go off and do your adventures and, and live your own life, you stay connected to those people, especially those who, who love you the most, your family, your friends, and that there's people in the way in which they care for you that will have an impact on your life, an actual, and I, and I can't explain it, it's very mysterious, but, but it will. Um, and so it's very, very important. Um, so I hope that you are inspired by this game to connect or to reconnect with the people in your life who care for you the most, who you love and look up to uh, and, and protect and all of those important things. Um, I truly think that uh, that Tolkien understood something about this too. Uh, he, of course, lost his parents at a very young age and then was uh, a parent himself. He had uh, a family that he was... Um, he was always writing letters to his, his kids, um, and those letters are amazing. Um, he was deeply, deeply in love with his wife. Uh, their, their love story is very beautiful. Um, and, and to the end of his life, of course, he was putting a lot of himself into his writing and his, his stories. And as those grow over time, uh, he continually goes back to the beginning, back to the beginning to try to, to capture something true about that story. Um, and I just so admire that. And, and I think it's exactly the same way that by the end of the book, his his characters have to come home, right? You have to go back to those people who are um, at the beginning of your story. You have to you have to tell them the things that you've been doing, and you have to reconnect with them um, over and over and over again. Um, it's not easy, um, but that is what I take to be one of the core messages uh, of this of this game. All right, so we have a suggestion here to the Captain Subasa soundtracks. I don't know what that is, but I, I'll check it out later, okay? Um, yeah, if you do nothing else, uh, do listen to some soundtracks from Earthbound. They're beautiful, um, but do try to play it. And for next time, we'll be back in a few weeks. Um, the first Monday in November, we'll be back here to talk about the sequel to this game. Never officially released outside Japan, but you can find it if you look. It's called Mother 3. And Mother 3 has a fan translation. You can play it if you'd like, um, and you can uh, hear all about it next time. We'll be playing Mother 3 here at Signum Academy on Twitch. Again, this is Wesley, and uh, thank you all for joining me 
I'm gonna I'm gonna say bye for now. You can always check us out on our website. You can send us uh, comments and questions, and check out all the cool stuff that we're doing in our various programs at Signum University. Thanks again. See ya.